So this story that we're going to talk about is very, very rage inducing. It made me very angry after reading it. And it's not necessarily something that's shocking, but still, when you hear about the specifics, it really is unthinkable. Now, I think that the left has done a really great job at persuasively arguing that healthcare in America should not be commodified. But we don't nearly talk enough about how hospitals as well should not be businesses. Hospitals should prioritize patients and not profits. But in this story, it really reiterates how important it is to more often include hospitals in this discussion about the decommodification of healthcare because they do a lot of terrible things that lead to people being harmed, especially when times are tough during a global pandemic that is so bad it only happens usually once a century. So as CNN's Casey Tolan reports, as the coronavirus spiked in Missouri last fall, a wave of cases hit a nursing home in the state's rural heartland. Robin Bull, a part-time nurse, remembered an ambulance coming and going constantly on one especially scary morning, rushing residents to Moberly Regional Medical Center, the local hospital. But even as Bull was helping send patients to Moberly Regional, the hospital was in the process of suing her and at least one one other former employee at the nursing home. They were two of more than 600 former patients the hospital has sued over medical bills during the coronavirus pandemic, according to a CNN analysis of court records. Bull's experience is hardly unique. Hospitals owned by Community Health Systems Incorporated, one of America's largest hospital chains, have filed at least 19,000 lawsuits against their patients over allegedly unpaid medical bills since March of 2020, even as other hospitals around the country have moved Moved to curtail similar lawsuits during the coronavirus pandemic, a CNN investigation found. The company's 84 hospitals, which are concentrated in the South and stretch from Alaska to Key West, Florida, have taken their patients to court for as little as $201 and as much as $162,000. They say litigation is a last resort. CNN's review of court filings across 16 states the company operates in found that most of the patients sued by CHS, like Bull, didn't hire a lawyer or fight the lawsuits and judges often ruled in the company's favor by default. In some states, defendants' debts piled on with attorneys' fees and interest. Elsewhere, the hospital chain's subsidiaries quickly moved to garnish defendants' paychecks after a judgment. CHS in 2020 enjoyed its most profitable year in at least a decade. Even as it was suing patients during the pandemic, the company made $511 million in net income last year, a big swing after four straight years of annual losses. That strong financial result led to the company's top executives earning millions of dollars worth of bonuses according to documents it has filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission. One reason for the success, CHS has been buoyed by taxpayer support. It received $705 million in pandemic-related aid from the federal government's CARES Act and other state and local programs in 2020, not including additional government loans it will have to pay back, according to its 2021 annual report to shareholders. Okay, let's step back and review all of the details here. They are suing thousands and thousands of patients during a pandemic in a year when they actually saw increases to their revenue after they took taxpayer money. Could they get any more brazen? I don't think they can get any more brazen if they tried. And the reason why they usually win by default, as the article referenced, is because normal working Americans, they can't afford to fight this legally. Having a lawyer who's good to represent you, it costs money. You know, for paperwork, court documents, there are legal fees associated with that. So a lot of people, they just, they can't fight it. So what happens? The court ends up uh, rewarding the hospital who's suing them, who actually has the resources to take on these individuals. It's a power imbalance and it's unjust, oh, unjust, and this is an injustice that has been happening forever in America. It's just that even as bad as these businesses called hospitals can be sometimes, at least some of them during a pandemic said, okay, maybe we won't harass people too much who can't afford medical bills. But not this hospital chain. I, it's just shocking. Like, reading the details, it's almost unbelievable. But it's totally predictable in our late-stage capitalist society. But at the same time, the details are still very shocking. Like, I never, as much as this is normalized in America, I never feel as if, oh, 
Sure, that's just the thing that happens in America. That's just the way it is. It's still rage-inducing because they're so shameless. Hospitals like this need to be nationalized immediately because they very clearly are showing you that they don't care about their patients. They care about profits. They're like a mafia. They treat you. You owe them for the rest of your life. You're in debt to them. And in the UK, it isn't this way. There are some privately run hospitals in the UK, but a lot of hospitals are actually publicly owned. So that means that doctors and nurses, they're actually government employees. Now, again, not all hospitals in the UK, but we don't even really have that as an option in the US. I mean, the closest thing is uh, the VA medical system for veterans. But we need to at least see an increase in publicly owned hospitals. And Bernie Sanders is on the right track in, in pushing for more community run health centers. But I mean, with the way the system is currently, we're going to continue to see this happening. Now, what would alleviate some of the pain that people are feeling is if we had a single payer system. So rather than sending all of these gigantic astronomical bills to the individuals, it just gets sent to the one insurance company representing all of America, the United States government. It's why we need Medicare for all. It's why we have to nationalize a good portion of hospitals in the United States. We can start with this chain. So, you know, for me, I always talk about Medicare for all, but I think that's the start. And then you build on Medicare for all after that. You slowly but surely turn the United States healthcare system into a more national healthcare system that we see in the UK, which is loved by British people. Just ask them. So, I mean, I'll leave that there. I think that the details of the story speak for itself. How shameless this, this company is. It's not surprising, but still the details are shocking because during a pandemic, you know, when other money-making companies, when other hospitals are choosing to give patients a break, not this chain. They're going full speed ahead, suing thousands of patients. It's just, it's unthinkable. During a year when they actually saw their revenue increase, it's just, it's awful. There's nothing left to say. It's just awful that this is happening.